Shalom Chavrim, I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, The Rejected King. I think today's message is going to be very opening and eye-opening. Also airing here on Danoon Institute, uh, our YouTube channel. And this, this will also be a podcast on Hebrew Nation Radio, Identifying the Messiah. And I uh, want to really thank the, the folks over there at Hebrew Nation Radio there. They've really been working um, extra to help us to be on the air there and uh, a lot of people are blessed by that so <clears throat> we appreciate their help in that uh, listen today's broadcast is a little bit different than usual and I wanted to do this because there is a lot of talk going on about the lineage of King David uh, in fact I've got a friend of mine over in England a very dear sister who has been contacted uh, by a certain group there saying that she is the 103rd grandchild of uh, King David as far as grandfather lineage and I realize these things can be exciting for people to know I mean a lot of people I'm sure would be be excited to know that they are, are uh, from the Davidic line or any other line uh, for that matter and uh, that as far as a royal line in, in regards to that and how they come up with the idea that the person is uh, a direct descendant of David is kind of interesting but uh, that's not really the point I want to get into I want to go into this because we have the articles like this one here Netanyahu will hand the scepter to the Messiah the son of David uh, this was on May 28, 2018 by Adam Aliyahu Berkowitz. Uh, and, you know, I, I appreciate uh, Adam and some of the articles that he writes there. And, uh, but at the same time, I see these. And then, of course, you have this one here, another one by Adam as well. And this is uh, called Ancient Genealogical Records Prove King David's Descendants Are Alive Today. And again, like I said, a good friend of ours uh, that is uh, actually has a DNA that uh, be her 103rd grandfather uh, is actually King David according to the records that she's shared with us now sadly enough though that very sister that has that genealogical record uh, has was so mistreated by the Israeli government when she was in Israel beyond belief in fact uh, you'd be very surprised and shocked to know her story and uh, maybe someday I'll have her share that with you here uh, very, very uh, mistreated uh, by the government there because she does suffer a lot of ailments. And uh, so, but anyway, we were with her there in Israel when all this happened, so we knew about this personally. But anyway, that's not the reason I want to get into this story here. I want to get into this story because the emphasis for the Moshiach ben David or the Moshiach ben Yosef, because under Talmudic Judaism and in Kabbalah, uh, theories there they believe that that uh, there is two Mashiachs coming contrary to the scripture of course but nonetheless in some uh, circles the Talmud trumps the Bible and they believe there's two messiahs coming Ben Yosef and Ben David and there are those that believe that of course Netanyahu is actually Ben Yosef according to this article right here this is what it says here Prime Minister Benjamin, Benjamin Netanyahu faces many of the same trials as biblical predecessor as leader of the Jewish people King David and it says Rabbi Levi Sodri, an award-winning Bible expert, makes the case that Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is the reincarnation of the biblical figure Jonathan, the son of King Saul who has returned in order to fulfill his promise of helping David bring in the Messiah. Okay, now I'm not going to go in so much into the political aspect of these arguments here, but I do find it rather interesting that a lot of times people forget the biblical narrative of what happened and how the children of Israel, my own people, rejected God completely. And they wanted a king. Although I appreciate the acts of King David, and I appreciate the acts of Solomon, and then we had other good kings in Israel's history, but most of them were evil and wretched and cruel, and did all kinds of ungodly things. Even David took and killed Bathsheba's husband so he could have her. 
Solomon ended up in idolatry. And those are supposed to be the two most notable kings. Let's look at the scripture behind this. I'd like to start with, though, right here, because Adam puts in here, 1 Kings chapter 9, uh, verse 5, Then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom over Israel forever, according as I promised to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. Well, it's interesting because... Israel's been without a man on the throne, at least as far as what the natural eye can see, for the last 2,000 years. Right? Last 2,000 years, there's not been a man on the throne of Israel. Unless you recognize that Jesus Christ, who was indeed the Mashiach, the son of David, fulfilled that prophecy and where did he go to sit down at the right hand of the father he is on the throne so no there's not been a man to fail to sit on the throne of David and if that be the case why are we looking for another man to sit upon the throne of David when there's already the king in his place but if you want to look for a natural lineage and of course, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, was that natural lineage, and he stayed on the throne. But let's also take a look at what the scripture says around 1 Kings, because so many people forget this. Now, listen, you might say right now, Steve, I heard this message. You uh, spoke about this recently. I'm going to go in a different direction tonight. All right, so just hang on there with me and, and, and uh, follow through with on this. All right, so as we were seeing, from that scripture there, he quotes from chapter 9, verse 5. Let's go to that. Let's go to the verse before verse 5. And as for thee, if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, integrity of heart and in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded you, and will keep my statutes and mine ordinances, there's a, there's a key right there. And remember, the last video I did on this, I showed you where the statutes and ordinances, according to the scripture, were written by Moses. It said they were written. I wish I'd have thought to put this one back in there again. I forgot where that's at. Some of you can maybe put it in the comments for people just for a reminder. Right? Were written by Moses. Not Talmudic. Talmudic is, is no oral law of Moses. That's just a bunch of rabbis, and they wrote their opinions. And they're entitled to their opinion. Even if we don't agree with it, there's some things I'm sure that they write or makes, makes perfect sense. You know? Uh, but there's some things that don't make any sense at all. Kind of like Christian ministers today. Some ministers write things that incredibly intelligent, smart, great. Other ones say things that you wonder where in the world they pull that out. Anyway, then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom over Israel forever, according as I promised to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. On conditions, if you keep my statutes and mine ordinances, but if you shall turn away from following me, you and your children, and not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, but shall go uh, and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and this house which I have hallowed for my name will I cast out of my sight, and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all peoples." We don't have a temple in Israel today. Right? When Jesus of Nazareth came on this earth and he spoke to the children of Israel and he specifically directly came at the Pharisees and Sadducees, the leaders of the temple of that day, and he called them a bunch of snakes and crocodiles. Well, that's in the Hebrew, Matthew, if you want the word crocodile. It's a Hebrew word that is used there. They call it serpent, but it's also crocodile. Reptilians, a mixed race, 
a mingled seed. And according to Ezra, that actually did happen. They had mingled their seed with those people of the lands, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Jebusites. Oh yeah, they did the exact same thing that God had told them not to do. No wonder why we ended up with a mess. Well, Ezra says that they put away their wives and stuff like that, but undoubtedly somebody slipped through the cracks. But then again, you know, the Maccabees overthrew the true priesthood, and it could have been that the Maccabees were those sons that were of that mixed multi well it wasn't a mixed multitude in this well, it was a mixed multitude that came back just like in the days of uh, uh, Moses when they came out of Egypt anyway so that's something we have to look at God had given a promise based on conditions all right but the whole problem is is where did everything go wrong in the first place you know years ago and I write about this I think in the book Yom Suf Maybe not. Maybe as Israel, are they still God's people? I've written two books, by the way, if you ever want to look at them. They're, they're on our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Uh, you can order it there. But um, I wrote one book called Israel, Are They Still God's People? And uh, I was more of a Zionist thinking at the time. And I still believe that Israel, as far as the Jewish people that want to return home for the coming of the Messiah, you don't have to go to the promised land for that, but the thing is, there are going to be a certain number that will be there when they believe that Yeshua is the Messiah. So it's plain as day. I believe that that's supposed to be something that will happen. But I don't believe in the Zionist movement that has allowed the butcher of innocent human beings, including our own Jewish brothers and sisters all over the planet, in order to create the state of Israel. It's like Pompeo the other day was praising uh, Roosevelt for his great job in bringing about the state of Israel. But he doesn't say anything about the fact that Roosevelt refused to allow the Jewish people to come to the United States when they were trying to flee the persecution of Nazi Germany. Wow, didn't know that one, hmm? Slipped through the cracks. So at any rate, uh, so where I want to go with here now is I want to, uh, we want to, Oh, I'm, that's what I remember now. I was going to tell you this story there. So years ago, back when Prime Minister Netanyahu got elected as Prime Minister the first time, um, and by the way, that was, that was all orchestrated. I didn't know it at the time. I used to really appreciate Mike Evans and uh, his story about that he tells about anointing him as, and prophesying that he'd be Prime Minister not once but twice. All that was an orchestrated an event is what happened. I discovered that later. But at any rate there, when he was elected Prime Minister, at that time I owned a moving business. We delivered medical equipment, organs, pianos. We specialized in large things, moving large items. I ended up in Destin, Florida one day. I was making a delivery there of a musical instrument there for a show that they were doing. And there was an Israeli family that was staying at the hotel there where we were making the delivery at. As I got on an elevator there, there's some little children that were speaking in the Hebrew language. It was back in the 90s, and of course I could understand them. And so I spoke back to them in Hebrew, and uh, I asked them, I said, where's your parents? They were like teenagers, and uh, they said, uh, they're here. And so I, I said, I'd like to meet your parents. Because I didn't get very often to speak Hebrew to somebody, and uh, uh, so at any rate, I met their parents, actually their mother, their father was asleep in the hotel room at the time. And I, I wanted to be able to be a witness of Christ, but I also had to do it in a roundabout way. And so I asked the sister, uh, this Jewish lady who was an air, airline stewardess uh, for El Al, uh, I assume El Al, she could have been a different airline, I don't know, but she was an airline stewardess. and. Uh, and as I spoke to her, I was just praying, asking God, what could I say to this woman? And I had no idea what I was about to say. And in fact, as the words proceeded from my mouth, I had no idea how I was even saying the things I was saying. But I asked the lady, I said, isn't it exciting to see that Bibi Netanyahu has been elected prime minister? 
And she said, yes. She said, it's wonderful. She says, uh, he's going to be a great prime minister. I said, I noticed on the news, the people were running to the streets and they were crying, BB, king of the Jews, BB, king of the Jews. And she said, yes. She says, isn't it marvelous? And I said, yes, it is. I said, but the problem is it'll never work. And she said, what? I said, you know, my sister, I said, the way we left God, is the way we must return to God. And I said, what you may not understand, and, and, and keep it in mind, I don't even know what the next word is going to be that's coming out of my mouth. I'm hearing myself speak, and I am and wondering, what am I saying? But I said to her, I said, my sister, I said, what you don't understand is when we, the way we left God is the way we must return to God. I said, yes, he no doubt will be a good prime minister. I said, but he will fail. I said, you remember the prophet Samuel, which I have the scripture about Samuel on the screen here. We'll talk about it in a moment. I said, you remember the prophet Samuel? And how the people, they begin to cry out and they said they wanted a king. They wanted to be like the other nations. They wanted someone to go for them out to their battles and come in again. And she said, that's right. I said, God gave us Saul. Saul didn't work out so well. Then we ended up getting David. David was a man after God's own heart. I said, but even with David, I said, you know, he sinned. He, he took another man's wife. He had this, the man killed. And I said, as the time went on, we ended up with Ahab. Ahab was married to Jezebel, who was a Zidonian, and brought idolatry into Israel. I said, finally, come to the place because of the idolatry and because of the sins of the people our temple was destroyed now, I didn't mention the name of Yeshua to her I didn't say Jesus to her I said but our temple was destroyed I said and then we were exiled to all the world I said and of course I'm skipping over you know the Babylonian exile etc those things like that you know I'm not going into that at this point but you know I said but now I said, after nearly 2,000 years of exile, I said, our people are, have returned back to the promised land. I said, the way you leave God is the way you go back to God. I said, and now that we're back in the land, I said, now we have a man that we are calling Bibi, king of the Jews. I said, but God had chosen to lead us by a prophet. I said, and one day we're going to realize that our king cannot work. I said, why? We're on our way home. I said, we're in a redemption process. Gula is what we would say in Hebrew. And she looked at me with the most sincerest look and she said, I never thought about it like this. Well, you know, God began to reveal to me even deeper as time went on. I thank them for the pleasure of meeting them. We departed from one another, but I believe that that woman has never forgotten those statements from long years ago. I guarantee you she remembers it to this day. She's a lovely young woman at the time. Well, like myself, she's probably aged. You know, I would assume she was probably around my age, so she's probably getting closer to 60 now. But at any rate, I'm not quite there yet myself, but you know, just roughly. She could have been a little older than me, but I'm not, I don't think so. I think she was either my age or maybe a little younger. So she could be between 50 and 60, something like that. So now I want to take you though, because I used to think that we had only rejected God as a king. Because see, this is the problem. This is what I'm wanting you to understand. As we look at what's going on in Israel today, this, this desire for uh, King David, I expect this from my own people. But the thing is, as believers in Yeshua, how can you believe this? 
other than to see it play its course. So Netanyahu is not going to work. So now they have the new article that he is the reincarnation of Nathaniel. Joshua's, excuse me, King David's, uh, I'm sorry. Let me get it right here. That he is the reincarnation of Jonathan, not Nathaniel. Get my mind mixed up here. The biblical figure King David's best friend, Saul's son. Right? So they realize that he's not working out. So now he's going to be the guy that passes the keys off to uh, Moshiach ben David. And of course, this is what Menachem Schneerson said he would do. So everything looks prophetic to everybody. Well, you just don't know these things, right? So. At any rate, so Samuel... It says here, in uh, 1 Samuel, where are we looking at right here? We are in chapter 8. I want to start with verse 6. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord, and the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto you, for they have not rejected you. But they have rejected me, and I should that, that I should not be king over them. You remember when Pilate had the sign placed over Yeshua, Jesus, King of the Jews, and the rabbis of that day were so angry they say right on there he says he's king of the Jews but he said to him he said I've written what I've written so he placed that sign over him that he was king of the Jews and what happened and he was he was the king of Israel Yeshua Hamashiach Jesus of Nazareth. And God says to Samuel, they didn't reject you. They have rejected me that I should not be king over them. This wasn't, by the way, this wasn't the first time that they rejected God. Three times Israel has failed to recognize their king. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt unto this day, in that they have forsaken me and served other gods, so they also, so do they also unto you, unto thee. I'm just using modern English to make it a little easier for some folks. They had rejected God. You see, a prophet was that secondary way in which God used to speak to the people as king because they didn't, they rejected him when he came down. You see, God had come down in the presence of the people. He loved Israel. He wanted to commune with them. You want to know why? Israel was chosen for one purpose and one purpose only. Because there was faith in Abraham. And God knew that through Abraham, through the faith of Abraham, that his descendants would produce the woman that would bring forth the seed, the woman's seed, which would be the Mashiach. Why is it a woman's seed? Because her faith would produce Christ. We are not a special people, some greater than the rest of the nations. We are all from Noah's sons and Noah's daughters, or his, in this case here, his daughter-in-laws. It didn't make one of us better than the other. We all have come from this family. But the thing about Abraham was Abraham believed God. 
and it was imputed to him for righteousness. That's what it was. He believed God. All right? And God knew that that kind of faith was the lineage that would bring forth the woman's seed, and that woman's seed would be her faith to believe God. Sarah should have been that woman. But Sarah laughed. When God comes down, and, and, and don't say, you know, that's funny. My Jewish brothers, i got to ask y'all a question. Why do you say God can't be a man? The three strangers that come down to Abraham and sit there at the cool of the evening, two of those were angels. One of those, Abraham, Moses wrote it, said that it was God. yod heh vav hey, A human body eating the very meal that was put in, put in front of him. Breaking all the modern day kosher laws, by the way. So I guess if God can... Uh, uh, have milk and meat at the same time, so could you, couldn't you? <laughs> it's amazing how these things just go over people's heads. Now, I shouldn't say go over people's heads, but I, I know you guys get it, but just like myself, I miss a lot of things too. I, every day we read our Bible, that's why we should read our Bible daily. God is always revealing things to us, not just read it, but prayerfully read it. So anyway, according to all the works that they have done since the day that they brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, in that that they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto you. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, howbeit thou shalt earnestly forewarn them, and shalt declare unto them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. And Samuel told the words of the Lord unto the king that asked of him a king. Now, by the way, this is interesting because when Rambam writes in uh, the the Midrash, excuse me, no, not the Midrash. I get 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 the. We'll just say the Talmudic version of Rambam's writings. Uh, Rashi wrote the mid uh, is the writer of the Midrash part of the Talmudic writings as well. But Rambam, the Memonides, excuse me, Memonides, he writes in there the law of the kings. This is, by the way, where the seven Noahide laws come from. It's from Rambam's writings. And of course, my Jewish brothers are so excited because Rambam preserved the laws of the kings. Samuel tells you what the law of the king is right here in the Word of God. You don't have to go write it in the Talmud. It's already written. And he said, this will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them unto him for his chariots and to be his horsemen. And they shall run before his chariots. And he will appoint them unto him for captains of thousands and captains of fifties and to plow his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his instruments of war and the instruments of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and to be cooks and to be bakers. And he will take your fields and your vineyards and your olive yards, even the best of them and given, uh, give them to his servants and he will take the tenth of your seed uh, and of your vineyards and give to his officers and to his servants and he will take your men servants your maid servants on and on and on and on and on right that was the law of the king the law of the king was to show you how messed up it would become you know in fact when I look over at uh, uh, North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un he reminds me of the very example of what the messed up king would be. His guys run alongside his limo. Well, just like they say here, run alongside of his chariot. We have the same thing here in America. Every president, put them in a motorcade, they got the guys walking alongside the limo. Hasn't changed, has it? This is not God's way. And yet my fellow believers are just all enthralled over Israel and them getting in a king, establishing a dictatorship once again. It's contrary to God's will. Now, let's turn over to Exodus. As I said to you, 
We rejected God when we rejected God's provided way, which was a prophet. But unfortunately, there are many in the world today that still cling to the prophet, and they have different prophets for different leaders, all kinds of groups all over the world to this day. They all have now got their prophet, and they believe that this is the provided way to God. No. They don't care which group it is. They all have their Elijahs, their Moses, their whoever else they might have. You have to go back to Exodus to see where, where this all got messed up at. And then think about Christ, because Christ wants to be the king ruling in your heart. The prophet was only to speak for the Lord, to be a voice for the Lord. But God wanted to be able to speak to us directly as well. Exodus. All right, we're going to go to chapter 20 in the book of Exodus. And we'll begin here at verse 15. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. Why? See, God had told Moses, to give you a little background for those that may not know, God had told Moses, Look, get the people ready. Three days I'm coming. Now, I know that's a scriptural type, and I have a feeling it has a lot to do with Hosea's prophecy in the third day. I'll gather them again. I'll revive them. I'll be with them. I'll, okay, oh, wait, we got to go to that one. All right, let's go to it. Ah. Uh, Forgive me here. Let's see here. Uh, is it Hosea or Hezekiah? I'm just trying to remember there. Sometimes I don't remember everything. Haggai, Hosea. Let me try Hosea real quick. Chapter 6. Yeah, here it is. Yes, it is. You know, you really need to look at chapter 5 first. They should run together, chapter 5 and chapter 6, the last part of chapter 5. This is important. Watch this, starting with verse 14. For I will be unto Ephraim as a lion, as a young lion to the house of Judah. I even I will tear and go away. I will take away, and there shall be none to deliver. Okay? God himself will tear and he will go away. Not just Ephraim, which is the house of Israel, but also he'll be a lion to the house of Judah. I even, I will tear and go away. I will take away and there shall be none to deliver. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face in their trouble. They will seek me earnestly. Wow. Wow. But yet we have many rabbis today. They quote Rambam, and Rambam quotes Daniel chapter 11. And I'll pull that up real quick just so you can see this here. Now, I don't have time to pull up the quote of Rambam itself. I have quoted it many times. Any, any uh, Jewish rabbi can tell you this is the case. This is how they slam Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, saying that he is not uh, the Messiah, they say that Jesus and his disciples are the ones that are guilty of the scripture of Daniel eleven fourteen when it says, Uvane parati amcha inasul hamid hazon venachashala shalu. All right saying, in other words, that the violent among your people will try to establish the vision, but they shall stumble. And Rambam says the violent was Jesus and his disciples. In fact, they're now rewriting the history. They're even trying to say that the uh, Qumran uh, community was a bunch of zealots, a band of violent men. They were trying to overthrow the people. The, this scripture is applying for today, not 2,000 years ago. 
You see, Hosea clearly shows you God says, I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their guilt. Do you realize what he is saying here? Alecha ashuva el makumi. That means God had to have been there. Now, some might say he was there in spirit. I say that he was there in a human body just like he was what? In the days of Moses in the wilderness journey when God said, uh, he said, tells Moses, prepare the people. In three days, wash your clothes, tell the husbands don't come near to their wives. Not that there was something wrong with being with your wife, but the thing is, is he wanted everything clean. I will come down in your presence. Make ready. And when God begins to come down, what do we have? The trumpet begin to blast. The fire begin to fall and the people got afraid. What happened on the day of Pentecost? There was a sound like a rushing mighty wind and the, and the room was all filled and there was cloven tongues like unto a fire that laid upon each one of them. It was the coming of God. But God says right here to the children of Israel, and that's both houses, Ephraim and Judah, He says, I will tear and go away. I will take away and there shall be none to deliver. And I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their guilt. So when Judah was put into captivity 2,000 years ago, it's because they did not acknowledge their guilt of what they did to Yeshua. He says, in their trouble they will seek me earnestly. There is a trouble coming upon us like never before. And I have a feeling, friends, it's not just to the Jews in the Middle East. That trouble will come upon us on a global scale. Because we all have need of having the king sit upon his throne. And his throne is the table of your heart. Now let's go to the next verse here. Or next chapter, chapter 6. Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn. He will heal us. He has smitten. He will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live in his presence. And let us know eagerly strive to know the Lord and is going forth as sure as the morning and he shall come unto us as the rain as the latter rain that watereth the earth O Ephraim what shall I do unto thee O Judah what shall I do unto thee for your goodness is as a morning cloud and as a dew that early passeth away He says, therefore have I hewed them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth that, that thy judgment goeth forth as the light. For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, than the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. And now you're, so many of the believers today, they're so excited about building a third temple. Get the fatted calf. Buy your gold coins so we can train the priests and slaughter the animals. Everything contrary to what he said to do. You're still rejecting the king. You're still looking for an earthly king. The new world order will give you one. Have no fear. They'll give you your seven Noahide laws as well. And the masons, the 21st degree masons can take and chop your head off. They wield the sword in their little emblem above their head. Why? They are the judges. They are the executioners. No wonder why they work hand in hand. So God says, so now you see, the third day. And by the way, the house of Israel was dispersed 780-something years before the dispersion of Judah. 
it's been 2,700 and some odd years, almost 2,800 years since this time happened. We are in the third day. God said to Israel in the book of Exodus, prepare yourselves for the third day. I will come down in your midst. And I guarantee you one thing, when he comes this time, he's not coming uh, to sing Kumbaya either. Which by the way, Kumbaya, Kum, arise, Ba, come, Ya, God. Wow. So Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you that he, his fear may be before you that you sin not. And the people stood afar off, but Moses drew near into the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Ye yourselves have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. You shall not make with me gods of silver or gods of gold. You shall not make unto you. An altar on the earth shalt thou make unto me. But they're doing it. They're getting ready. All right. Now, in Deuteronomy, it's, it's, it's amazing to me how far we have gotten from God. I put Deuteronomy up here. I, I did not make myself a note why, so let's just read a little bit and we'll see why. For thou shalt be wholehearted with the Lord thy God. For these nations that thou art dispose, disposes, disposes, Hearken unto soothsayers and to diviners. Yeah. For thee, I, I know where I'm going. This, I remember now why. What, I'm, what I want you to be able to see as we get into this part of the broadcast now. Again, like I said, what's going on in modern days here, there is so much emphasis that we are supposed to, uh, or under, let me put it this way, under some extreme Talmudist, and even amongst those Jews that believe Yeshua, or at least they say by mouth they believe in Yeshua, and I believe some of them have sincere hearts. I won't call names, but I'm telling you, they're trying to bring Believers in Yeshua, they're trying to dethrone Christ from their hearts and put them underneath rabbis in Israel today. Are you out of your minds? And they're saying that you have to repent for the sins of leaving Judaism. The only repentance that God is requiring is for the house of Judah and the house of Israel to wake up and recognize their own guilt. Hosea chapter 5 says it, For I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. Christ was promised. God said to Moses, I'll no longer speak to them like this, but I'll raise up a prophet like it unto me. And he says to them, Him you will hear, and all that he says, and that whatever man that does not hear, he will be cut off. And Christ came 2,000 years ago, and because of the sins of the people, they did not believe him. They were cut off. As he says right there, I even I will tear and go away, I will take away, and there shall be none to deliver. And when Titus rolled into Jerusalem, there was none to deliver. I will go and return to my place. It showed that he was here. God was here. He came down. As the prophet Moses had promised, a prophet likened unto me, will be, God will raise up amongst your brethren. The son of David has already come. And he says, I will go until they acknowledge their guilt. The sins that they had committed against him by rejecting him like they did with, with Saul. Or excuse me, with David, or, you know, Samuel. They rejected Samuel the prophet and wanted a king instead. They rejected God when God came down in the presence with Moses. Then God says, okay, I'll give him a prophet. He used the prophets all the way into the time when Christ come. When Christ come, 
Now Christ was the, the, the very prophet that was prophesied of. You can't get any greater than that. And he says, I'll return. I'm going to go back until they acknowledge. Do you know what will bring Christ back down? If we take what the scripture says right here, okay, let's just take a look here. I will go return to my place till odd, right there in Hebrew, odd, until they acknowledge their guilt. Zechariah chapter 12, when they looked upon him whom they thrust through, and they said, there's actually another scripture, I forget where it's at, you know, it says, uh, where did you get these wounds? He said, in the house of my friends. But when they look in Zechariah, and John says Zechariah was fulfilled 2,000 years ago, I believe it's a compound fulfillment because it's by family name and not by tribal order 2,000 years ago they knew what tribe they belonged to. But according to Zechariah 12, that is the house of Judah only and not the house of Israel. In fact, the house of Israel, we find out scripturally, ends up in so much idolatry, they can't even help Judah. And that's why Christians are starting to go back under the rabbis, because you can't help them, you're in too much idolatry. Like I said, if you listen to this channel, you'll hear the truth. You want to go listen to somewhere else and get your ears tickled, go ahead. So he said he would return when they acknowledge their guilt. When they finally realize that Christ Jesus was the Mashiach. Then they'll, then they'll get it, right? But what's the problem? What are we, what are we dealing with now? For those nations that are, that are disposed hearken unto soothsayers and, and to diviners, and as for you, the Lord your God hath not suffered you so to do. A prophet will the Lord thy God raise up unto you, Moses speaking, from the midst of you, of your brethren, like unto me. Unto him you shall hearken, according to all that Thou didst desire of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, See, notice that, according to all that you, des uh, you desired of the Lord, you couldn't handle him coming down like he is in his majesty, so you wanted Moses to speak, so God decided then to come down as a human being so you could deal with it. And they still rejected him. What a shame. The Lord said unto me, They have well said that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, liken unto you. And I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet that shall speak a word presumptuously in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. And you're going to see what will happen. I'm sure they apply that to Jesus too. Second Kings. Um, chapter 17. Beginning here, verse 12. And they served idols. Show you what happens to Israel. The Lord had said unto them, You shall not do this thing. Yet the Lord forewarned Israel. Right? And Judah, by the hand of every prophet, saying, every seer, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways, and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by the hand of my servants the prophets. Notwithstanding, they would not hearken, but harden their neck like the neck of their fathers, who believed not in the Lord their God. 
And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that, that he made with their fathers and his testimonies wherewith he testified against them. And they went after things of naught and became naught. And after the nations that were round about them concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do the like uh, of them. And they forsook all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, even two calves, and made an Asherah and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. You know, it's almost like that's happening again today. People are more interested in the host of heaven and all the signs that are going on. And they cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divination and enchantments and gave themselves over to do that which was evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him. And the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. And there was none left but the tribe of Judah only. Also Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their God but walked in statutes of Israel which they practiced. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of the spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. Both of them. Hosea's prophecy laid right out in there. Okay? Now, also in Hosea chapter 4. Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel, for the Lord hath the controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. Swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break all bonds and blood toucheth blood. Therefore doth the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein doth languish with the beasts of the field and the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fish of the sea also are taken away. Yet let no man strive, neither let any man reprove, for thy people are as they that strive with the priest. Therefore shalt thou stumble in the day, the prophet also shall stumble with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject you, that thou mayest uh, that, 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 that your sh excuse me that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I also will forget thy children. The more they are increased, the more they sinned against me. I will change their glory into shame. They feed on the sin of my people and set their heart on their iniquity. And is like the people like priest. And I will punish him for his ways and will recompense him for his doings. And they shall eat not have enough. They shall commit harlotry and shall not increase because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. Listen, there has been no change, whether it be house of Judah or house of Israel, since 2,000 years ago with the exception of those that have allowed Christ to be king on their hearts, to sit on the throne of God. There has been no change. i got several verses I want to focus on here in Jeremiah chapter 8. We're going to go from 1 to 11. We're going to look at three, chapter, verse 3, verse 8, and verse 9. At that time saith the Lord, they shall bring out of the bones of the kings of Judah, and the bones of his princes, and the bones of priests, and the bones of the prophets, and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves. And they shall spread them before the sun, and the moon, and the host of heaven, whom they have loved, and whom they have served, and after whom they have walked, and whom they have sought, and whom they have worshipped. They shall not be gathered nor buried, they shall be for dung upon the face of the earth. You know, this is one reason why I don't get into this blood moon issue. And death shall be chosen rather than life. Notice that one there. Death shall be chosen rather than life. By all the residue that remain of this evil family, that remain in all the places whether I have driven them, saith the Lord of hosts. You know, that was Barabbas. When it said, death shall be chosen rather than life. God put before them. Two different ones. That's just like when the scripture says, over when God says uh, to Moses, let's see, he says, I've, uh, I don't remember how it's quoted, so I'm not going to quote it. I, I just caught something, though, there. I'll have to go back and research that out some more. 
Yeah, wait a minute, there he is. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me see if I can find it real quick. So let me take you to Ezekiel. This is something a lot of people never even think about. Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 25. Here we go. I'll start with verse 24. Because they had not executed mine ordinances, but had rejected my statutes and had profaned my Sabbaths, and their eyes were after their father's idols. Wherefore, I gave them also statutes that were not good and ordinances whereby they should not live. And I polluted them in their own gifts, that they set apart all that opened at the womb, that I might destroy them, to the end that they might know that I am the Lord. Alright? So there was a good law and a not good law, according to what's written right here. See? And it says it right there. Huchim lo tovim. Okay? So it was statutes that were not good. Now, I'm not going to get into that issue right now, but let me explain to you why I show you this. Because when we're looking over here at, uh, where were we at again? We were in Jeremiah, and we are at chapter 8, verse 3, And death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue that remain of this evil family, that remain in all the places whither I have driven them, saith the Lord of hosts. The only family that remained left was the house of Judah, and they did choose death over life. They chose Barabbas. And there is actually, there is actually documentation that they say that Barabbas was also called Yeshua. Yeshua Baraba. Salvation, son of the Father. But he was an insurrectionist. According to the scripture, he'd been involved in, in murder. Right? You have to always remember, set your phone on airplane mode when you're doing a video because you know, tell them what they'll come up with on there. So, it says, And death shall be chosen rather than life. Christ was the tree of life. And he was rejected. And they took death, Barabbas, instead. Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Do men fall and not rise up again? Doth one turn away and not return? Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. Right? I attend and listen, but they spoke not aright. No man repenteth him of his wickedness. What did Hosea said? He's not, he's not going to return until they repent saying, What have I done? Everyone turneth away in his own course as a horse that rusheth a headlong into battle. Yea, the stork in heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the swallow and the crane observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the ordinance of the Lord. How do you say we are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, well, certainly in vain hath he wrought the vain pen of the scribes. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? They rejected the word of the Lord. Therefore will I give their wives unto others and their fields to them that shall possess them. For from the least even unto the greatest everyone is greedy for gain. For from the prophet even unto the priest everyone dealeth falsely. And they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people lightly saying peace, peace when there is no peace. Ve'en shalom. That's why I say in my news broadcast so many times, you know, shalom, aval, ain shalom, there is no peace. Why lie to you? And this is the way they're going to do it here. And yet, and like I said, so many people are saying, you've got to go into the rabbis. One particular messianic rabbi tells the, the, the people, especially the people in South America, Go into the rabbis. Even admits, I know I don't agree with a lot of what the Talmud says and what the rabbis say today, but the Messiah will fix it when he comes. He already fixed it 2,000 years ago, and you refused to hear his word. And he said he will not return until you acknowledge your guilt. 
So you got to fix it before he can come. In closing, I want to share with you here Matthew's prophecy, or Jesus' own words. In chapter 21, verse 42, Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures a stone which the builders rejected? The same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall not fall on this stone shall be broken, but who, on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Christ Jesus was that stone. There's so much more I could say, but I'll, I'll save it for another time. I encourage you to go back and look at some of the videos I've done recently especially when I deal with the issue about the reptilians, as I mentioned earlier. And, and maybe we should just, because this video may go into hands of someone that had never, never heard the words I said before, maybe we should look at a couple of things here real quick here before I, I leave with you. If we go to Matthew 23, you know, because the corruption that came in, we wonder why Israel got so corrupted the way they did. Well, if we look right here, Jesus says here in Matthew, we'll start with here, verse 16, chapter 23, Woe unto you blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing, but whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. You fools and blind, for whether is greater the gold of the temple that sanctified the gold. And whosoever shall swear, let me go a little further down. Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe and mint and anais and cumin and have omitted the weighter matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These all you have to have done and not to leave the other undone. You blind guides which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter the outside that they may be clean also. Woe unto you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto whited sepulchres which indeed appear to be beautiful outward, but were within full of dead men's bones and all uncleanliness. Right? Now he keeps on going down to finally he sits there in verse 33. You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Let, let me back up. Listen, we can't, we can't miss this. Verse 29, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore you be witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill you then up the measure of your fathers. You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? That word generation is family of vipers. Serpents. By the way, a viper is a serpent that can produce a child and not lay eggs. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall you scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. Now, how come they ended up being these vipers? They were from a Nephilim race. How did they end up doing that? They broke the commandments of God and they did exactly what God said for them not to do. They allowed their seed to pass through the fire to Molech. In this case here, they didn't have to so much let their seed pass through the fire. They married in among while they were in the Babylonian exile. And they married in, according to Ezra, they had children by the Hittite, the Perzite, the Amorite, all these Jebusites. They practiced this. In fact, it even says they practiced the soothsaying and, and all these enchantments and all these ungodly things that brought Nephilim race into Israel. Now, they said they put away their wives and stuff, but nothing says they didn't go back with them. They just said they put them away. And I kind of wonder if when the Maccabees overthrew the priesthood, which is what created the Pharisaic line, I have a feeling they were the children. 
because there is an interesting document called the Assumption of Moses. I can't say it's exactly right. I don't know, but I find it very interesting that Moses prophesies in that particular document, if it's written by Moses, that a slave class was going to rise up. Hmm. Maybe the Maccabees are Levitical line, but they may have been the ones that were crossbred in with these other nations while Israel was in exile. That's a conjecture. I don't say that's right, just a conjecture. Anyway, listen, if you want to support the broadcast that we're doing here, we need your help in doing so. We appreciate you. We love you. We thank you. Um, we're getting very near to sending information to you guys, but just keep in mind, you'll have to read between the lines. Okay? But we have things set up to be able to stay in touch with you because eventually they're not going to allow these types of videos online anymore. They're working, by the way, too. Like what I just read you here, where Jesus calls them a generation of vipers, they're either going to rewrite it or they're going to remove it from your Bible. This is going to be considered anti-Semitic. Chapter 23 and chapter 12 of Matthew will be considered anti-Semitic. Just like one Messianic rabbi got angry with me, he says, because I spoke of the Pharisees the way I did, and he said he took offense to it. Well, sure he would. But the thing is, the same man claims to believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, and Jesus is the very guy that spoke against the Pharisees too. I know it wasn't an easy message, but thank you for listening. And again, please support the work we're doing. Your help is greatly needed. I'm Steve Benoom with Israeli News Live. And also thank you for those of you that were watching today, or listening today, rather, on Identifying the Messiah on Hebrew Nation Radio. Um, you can check out our, our broadcasts that are there. It's fixing to be up in a podcast very soon. Um, and, uh, but we are there. I think if you look it up, you can see on there, Identifying the Messiah, we air three times a week on that broadcast there. A little 30-minute uh, clip or 25-minute clip, actually. And, uh, and like I said, we do everything we can to reach people in every walk of life. So that's why we're there. I, I don't say that I uh, agree with everything that is there. I don't have no idea. I don't listen to the broadcasts that are there. Uh, but I stand for the truth. And if you stand with us for truth, please support the work we do. Our address is here on the bottom of the screen. And, uh, and we thank you for your kindness. God bless you. Shalom.